Hey everybody, this is a video for my uh, 4DS Precal students trying out a new microphone today. The last one I was using was, I guess, starting to go bad on me. It started making me sound like I had a weird echo going on sometimes. So hopefully this one's a little more reasonable, although I think it makes me sound a bit more like a robot. Maybe that's not such a bad thing. Uh, this is the lesson for 6.3, where we move on to what I call part two, the tough part. These are the tough ones. And I'm actually only going to do two examples for you today because I want you to try as many of them as you can on your own. I don't want to deprive you of the joy of doing these fantastic identities. These are these are just so much fun. Back when I was on the committees that used to mark provincial exams for the province, I would volunteer to do the identity questions because most people hated doing them. I thought they were all kinds of fun. I, I really dig them. And I even find it kind of cool when somebody comes up with a way to solve it that's different than the way I was thinking about it. Maybe something I didn't notice. But I'm going to do these my way. If you find another way to do it, it could be valid. But uh, I tend to stick with the rules the way that they told us to them in your notes. And that is step one. I think I'm going to switch everything to sines and cosines. So on this side, we don't usually work both sides at the same time, but both sides here are quite complicated. So I'm going to start by turning the left side into cotangent, which is cos over sine, and cosecant, which is 1 over sine. And already I'm seeing something that's letting me think, aha, I need the denominator to be nothing but sines. And then eventually I need to split this denominator up on the right-hand side. So that's so now this side's much more complicated. I'm going to work that side. So the first thing I have to kind of choose is, well, actually, I'll do the thing that I don't have any choice in. Sine 2 theta only has one identity, right? Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. Or in this case, they're using alphas, but you get the idea. So that's 2 sine theta cos theta. I had no choice for that. And then plus the sine theta that was already there. Right, so I've replaced this with that. Now, I have some choices for this thing, right? Like, look at the, the choices you have for cos of 2, two uh, theta. It could be cos minus sine squared, 1 minus sine squared, 2 cos squared minus 1. Which one do I want? Well, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I need the denominator to have nothing but sine. I kind of want this cosine to go away. So I'm going to stick with the one that has nothing but cosines in it, in the hopes that it cancels the cosine I have in the denominator. So I'm picking that one. 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So I've replaced this with that. Sweet. Now what? Well, I think I've said before when I'm showing you these, the key is to recognize stuff. Would it help if I reorganized this? That's a square, by the way. Didn't write that very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, do you recognize what's going on here? We're going to use our factoring skills. Can you look at that and have it remind you of 2x squared minus x minus 1? Can you see that in there? Because you can factor that. It's 2x plus 1, x minus 1. Only with cosines. And on the bottom, notice what you can do there? You can factor sine out of those two things. So I'm going to do those two things. I'm going to change this into a factored form of 2 cos theta plus 1, cos theta minus 1. And on the bottom, I'm going to factor out sine theta, leaving me 2 cos theta plus 1. Hey, those two factors cancel, and I have cos theta minus 1 over sine theta. And now I'm going to do the opposite of a common denominator, right? I'm going to split this into that thing over the common denominator minus that thing over the common denominator, which is exactly what I have on the other side. I'm not saying that's the only way to do it. I could have picked perhaps a different thing to substitute in here from the other two choices and maybe worked through there somehow, but this one worked for me, so I like it. Feel free to try it a different way if you want. All right, 
Next. 1 plus tan squared theta over 1, sorry, 1 minus tan squared theta over 1 plus tan squared theta equals cos 2 theta. Hmm. Okay, what are we going to do with this thing? Well, once again, this looks like maybe, oh, I can use my, my double angle formula, but I'm actually going to hold off. This side's way more complicated. I'm going to, again, go back to the old turn this into sines and cosines. There. And over here, I'm just going to leave this alone. Because remember, I can change that into one of three different cos 2 theta formulas. I honestly don't know which one right now I'm going to turn the other side into. So I'm going to hold off. This guy's going to just stay there for now. This, I can do all kinds of things with. How about for starters, I simplify the numerator and denominator by changing this into cos squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta and cos squared theta plus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta. Now, does everybody get what I did here? I found a common denominator between 1 and cos squared theta, so I times this by cos squared theta over cos squared theta, and I did the same thing here times by cos squared theta over cos squared theta. So now I have that. Now I'm dividing these two complex fractions here. I'm going to divide them. So dividing fractions means multiplying by the reciprocal. So I take the numerator and I multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. Can you see where this is going? Two neat things happen here. Neat thing number one is those two cancel. Neat thing number two is, hey, I should recognize that. That's my favorite, the best of the identities. Sine squared plus cos squared equals one. So this whole thing here is just one. So I have cos squared theta minus sine squared theta over one. I don't, I'm not going to bother writing over one. And actually, that is one of the three choices for cos two theta. So that equals cos 2 theta. Ta-da! Neat! Take your time and try as many of these as you can. The next couple pages are ones for you to practice. If you'll notice, they have uh, n uh, numbers beside them because, yeah, we actually took these from old provincial exams. So practice, try those, and I will post uh, answers for those on the blog. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's 6.3 Part 2.